We humans seem to have a compulsion to explore the great beyond. It's why, for hundreds of years, we've studied the cosmos and more recently built incredible ships to take us there. And if it weren't for some key gemstones and precious metals, the scientists and engineers from space programs around the world wouldn't be able to construct these incredible spacecrafts. Carbon is a pretty amazing element. And that may be the biggest understatement I've uttered on this show. It's the base of all life on Earth. And even when it's flying solo, it can arrange itself into some pretty cool useful objects like coal, graphite, and diamonds. I'm not even gonna talk about diamonds and how the crystal structure of the carbon atoms makes it the strongest now, substance known to man, which explains why scientists can which bonded why carbon atoms, atoms to make a whole host of other super strong materials. materials only because I've said it many times before and I don't like sounding repetitive. But since we know this about carbon, scientists are now using carbon to make lighter yet stronger substances to build future spaceships. They've created carbon composite ceramic tiles. These composites are three to four times stronger than steel by weight, but that pales in comparison to the new carbon nanotubes, which are 600 times stronger. These scientists and engineers accomplished this by taking the immense strength of the carbon bonds and arranging them into long cylindrical tubes. They are now making great strides to produce bulk material using these molecular tubes, resulting in stronger, yet lighter, materials. While carbon nanotubes may be cool, they aren't as pretty as precious metals like gold. Lucky for us, space travel makes use of this incredible bling, not just because it's shiny and valuable, but because it's extremely good at protecting spacecrafts from solar heat and radiation. Many satellites use gold-plated mylar sheets for this exact purpose. You know those gold sails that you see on satellites? Some of those are actually coated in real gold. Others are coated in a synthetic material that just happens to look like gold, for consistency, I guess. But it's not just satellites that get to be so fly, get it? Astronauts' helmets also implore a thin layer of gold in the visor to fend off harmful radiation. And the fact that gold is extremely resistant to corrosion makes it ideal for use in microelectronic components and satellites that rely on a speedy transfer of data. The use of gold in spacecrafts isn't new. In the mid-90s, NASA deployed the Mars Global Surveyor, a gold-plated telescope mirror which was part of a laser device that charted the entire surface of Mars over a two-year period, which to me sounds like the worst evil plan a Bond villain has ever concocted. But it's not just carbon bonds and gold that aid NASA in their cosmic exploits. Quartz, a choice mineral for electronics, plays a vital role in certain spacecrafts. Scientists use these crystals in oscillators and resonators because when an electric charge is applied to these stones, they pulse at a constant rate, a property known as piezoelectricity. Spacecrafts need these oscillators and resonators to broadcast frequencies and maintain clocks in certain electronic devices. Smartphones use these crystals to perform the exact same function. And if you want to learn more about that, check out our video on gems in your smartphone. Have you ever used gemstones and precious metals to build a satellite or spaceship? Let us know down in the comments. While you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the facts and science of gemstones and minerals, check out the links below. Thank you for watching.